Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. So Marine and Navy veteran Carrie Walden is a 40-year-old Kansas resident. He posted photos on Facebook. He also live-streamed his crimes from the Capitol. One photo contained a caption that said, quote, I had just climbed the West Wall, LOL. So funny. Um, So one of Walden's fellow Marines actually turned him in, somebody he uh, was working under. And during a February 3rd interview with the FBI, Walden admitted to entering the Capitol through a broken window. The FBI also asked Walden to write down exactly what he did on January 6th. And Walden wrote in part, quote, the police were present and I was not asked to leave. I fist bumped and devil horned the SWAT line. I went with a bus of Trump supporters. Um, He continued his cooperation with the feds by sending them copies of photos and videos that he had taken at the Capitol. So he was actually, you know, pretty good about going along with everything and, and trying to do what he could to cooperate. So Walden was arrested on May 28th. He was charged with the basic four misdemeanors because There was no evidence that he took part in any violence or vandalized any property. And Walden was charged with entering a restricted building or grounds, disorderly conduct, two counts of that, um, one count of parading or demonstrating in a Capitol building. So he pleaded guilty to that last misdemeanor, as we've seen with so many of these other people. And that was in October of last year. So he was looking at a sentence of up to six months in prison, anywhere up to $5,000 in fines. It could be either or, um, or both. And then at his sentencing hearing, Walden apologized. And I have to say, it's probably one of the more sincere and selfless apologies that I've heard. Walden told the court, quote, if I could take it all back, I would. I didn't see a lot of what happened I saw on TV when I was there. It was a terrible day, and I'm really ashamed of myself that I was a part of that. So it seems that he gets that there was stuff going on that day that he wasn't aware of. And now that he is, he knows the whole thing was wrong. And although prosecutors admitted, like I said, he didn't harm anyone, he didn't destroy anything, they argued that Apparently, Walden took a gas mask with him. So they said, you know, he wore it inside of the building. So he at least seemed to be prepared for violence on January 6th. He at least anticipated that he would need a gas mask for some reason. They also said that Walden's 12 years of military service made his conduct that day, quote, all the more troubling. And that's something that we've been seeing is that people who served in the military or officers are, you know, they're not necessarily getting tougher sentences, but the prosecutors are asking for a more strict and stringent sentencing. So this guy lucked out because the judge presiding over his case was that Trump appointed U.S. District Judge Dabney Friedrich. Um, Friedrich acknowledged that Walden's actions undermine the electoral process and the values of our country But she sentenced him to only 30 days of home detention, three years of probation, and 60 hours of community service. She also ordered him to pay a $500 restitution fee. So I don't know, guys. Maybe he gets it. You know, I I try to put myself in the shoes of the people who didn't act violently that day. And honestly, you know, they just thought truly that they were protesting a stolen election. You know, I really have to wonder if numerous news sources and numerous people that I trust kept telling me over and over again for months that there's proof of election fraud and that the election was stolen, what would I do? You know, would I at least show up to protest? And would I walk into the building if the doors were already open? You know, if I saw that thousands of people were already inside, 
would I maybe walk in to see what the building looks like and just to walk around and shout and make my voice heard? The truth is I probably would. I have to say that. Um, now, the difference is, I think, that the news sources and the people that I trust would never do something so unethical, so dangerous, and so selfish. And, and that's the difference. I don't think that I would be there because my news sources and the people that I believe in, they wouldn't, they wouldn't make something like that up to begin with. So, but if they did, I don't know. Anyway, think about it, guys. Let me know what you, what you think you would do. Think about somebody in the media, someone that you watch, uh, whether it be on the internet, whether it be on a, you know, traditional television show, cable channel, um, local news source, you know, someone that you really believe in that you watch all the time. If they told you over and over again, that something like that happened, what would you do? I'd like to hear from you guys. So anyway, I'll let you know if I hear more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.